It's been a full trip around the sun since Animal Crossing New Horizons entered the world. It was the game of the pandemic, and it showed us what it might look like to be in debt to Elon Musk and his Mars colony, but in a nice, kind of cute way. Almost exactly one year ago, Tom Hanks and the Utah Jazz got coronavirus and the entire world went to shit. A week after that, Animal Crossing New Horizons came out, also Doom Eternal, on the exact same day. It was like a morality tale of the Middle Ages. When you're rationing your last toilet paper roll, do you want to play this? Or this? Cute raccoon people or steroid demons? Fuck it. Give me the cuteness. We garden, we frolicked, we learned how to manipulate the stock market thanks to Daisy May's turnips. Should I have already learned that in high school? Yes. Is our education system in the country broken? Also yes. I am the Black Hokage, your tour guide around this island today. The usual caretaker of this sunny YouTube archipelago is taking care of some other important business. At least, that's what they told me. Adam. I think you're a wonderful addition to the island. Well, it's a nice escape from living in constant fear of a deadly plague. All right, let me just pull up your itemized bill. It looks like everything comes to a mere, oh, 51,432 bells. What? How? Well, I mean, there's your food, uh, you know, the data plan on your phone, and of course, uh, your lodging. You gave me a tent. Well, then maybe it's time to talk about custom homes. I can upgrade you to a single room, no kitchen, no bathroom. Uh... Don't do it, Adam. Tom Nook is a damn criminal. That's one thing that I've learned. And you learn a lot in the year of playing Animal Crossing. But is the game actually good? Or are we all traumatized? New Horizons is the first Animal Crossing game that I played, but the series was first released in 2001 on the N64. That's right, Tom Nook has been ripping people off for 20 years and no one has done anything about it. Okay, if a tent costs 50,000 bells, how much does a house cost? 200,000. What? Look, I'll tell you what. I'll write off the first 50,000 bells as miles on the condition that you help out around here and fix up the island. It's a deal. That's how it starts. Have fun weeding and picking up tree branches. Like life with a theater degree, there's no defined goal or path to success. You clean up and design your island, maybe think about how you should have taken business classes instead all while trying to pay off your massive debt to Tom Nook. This game sold over 5 million digital copies in the first month, and more than 22 million copies worldwide by August. It was a phenomenon, the new virtual reality for millions of gamers. I don't need to get into what the game is. You either played it yourself or, you know, someone who was one of Tom Nook's disappeared ones. The gameplay stakes were low, the atmosphere was soothing, and the animals are cute. Except this one. I don't like this one. It's not for me. Is this supposed to be an animal or a cookie or a messed up doll wearing a human skin? No, nope, not, not a fan. Just, just stop staring at me like that, Coco. Just stop. Some gamers just loved the game for what it was. Other gamers found themselves playing Animal Crossing daily as a way to create structure in their suddenly structureless lives. But did they actually enjoy it? I've been waiting days. I've been counting down to be able to get my hands on this game. I get my hands on this game and I play it with gusto. I am paying off my debt as quickly and as efficiently as possible, doing all my chores, hitting the rocks, chopping the trees, going to friends' places, and you know, getting the fruit. Uh, and I loved every single minute of it. I think it gave some structure to a very structuralist point in life. Uh, and it was a ton of satisfaction. Uh, just being able to still connect, share, be inventive, and most of all, be distracted from something that really didn't have much precedence in our lives and we didn't really know how to process. What is truly phenomenal is that not only was the game available then, it's how the game stepped up to the plate and really assuaged a lot of anxieties and weirdness that all of us were experiencing. Patience is virtue in Animal Crossing, especially since it's synced to real world time. It takes three days to set up a museum, three real world days. It takes three to six days to grow back fruit that you've harvested, a full actual week. That's three times longer than it took Moderna to design their coronavirus vaccine. Get vaccinated, everyone. We, we need everyone to get this shot so we don't have to be on this fake animal island. Just please take the shot. So it takes two hours to try to have Blathers assess three freaking fossils and then try to donate them to him. Not really, but also Blathers, get your shit together. I don't have time to go through your long-winded bullshit for each item when I have a full inventory to go through. Also, just tell me which items I've already donated so I don't have to waste any more time staring at your stupid face. But it's mostly calming with a laid-back pace that offers you a safe place to simply exist. Wait a second, 
How the fuck did you make your house that nice? What? How? Where did you get the money to buy all the furniture? Who has the patience to design all of this? Not only do you have a waterfall in your house, but how the hell did you get family pictures in it? Did you watch a YouTube tutorial? Ikea, I'm not gonna lie, this looks dope, but was it hard to put together like where the instruction is just as bad in the game as in real life? In the world of hustle culture where being productive 24 seven is the ideal we think will make us happy, playing a game with simple tasks you actually achieve feels like a warm blanket. Actually better than a blanket, a study out of Oxford University found that playing games like Animal Crossing increased well-being. Playing this game could actually be good for your health, and British people said it, so it must be true. So go ahead, feel vindicated in the time you spent putting your village's happiness before your own. Animal Crossing is a place to live out your fantasies of actually owning a house and just being outside. Remember outside? No, not the beast! Not the beast! The wellness is just the honeymoon. Like an adult store on Ventura Boulevard, DLC is what keeps the fire stoked. New Horizons has been one of the few Animal Crossing games to continue the release of additional content post-launch, and we thank them for it. Seasonal offerings and holiday celebrations gave fans something to look forward to. Except for Bunny Day. Nobody asked for that. Great practical joke, Jim. Got me go to the annex. Oh no! God! No! God, please, no! 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 Thanks to Animal Crossing for seasonal updates like letting me shake ornaments out of the tree so that I can hang that ornament on my other tree. It really helped numb the sting of not being able to see my girlfriend this year. Couldn't hit real life milestones? New Horizons had you back. June was officially dubbed wedding season. If you had to cancel your wedding this past year, at least you could have traveled this weird guy's maybe Coal Island and take fake wedding photos of this unhappily married couple for their anniversary. <laughs> a fair trade. During the summer, the game released a swimming feature. Of course, you had to buy a wetsuit to be able to do it because this is a capitalist nightmare posturing as a utopia. But isn't it nice to be able to dive for seaweed? The same shit that washes up on the shore by itself? We were slowly introduced to a whole new group of cute and quirky characters. Take Jolly Red, an even more obvious scammer than Tom Nook. He sometimes sells you counterfeit art. At least if someone sells me a pair of Nikes out of the trunk of a car, I can wear them home. What am I supposed to do with this? With no real options to date human people this year, players turn their affections to Wilbur the Dodo Bird, who is now a sexy pilot icon. I won't spend any more time on this, because remember, 30 million people spent money on this game. 30 million. Fans weren't just creating lies for themselves in Animal Crossing, they were recreating scenes and intros from their favorite video games and TV shows, because why not? Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that was incredible. This past fall, rather than campaign on the ideas that are popular with young people, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris made their campaign signs available to download in-game, hashtag youth vote, which feels about as slacktivist as it gets. I put a $15 minimum wage bumper sticker on the back of my GTA car, and I think I'm getting through to them. But hey, anything to break up the monotony. I caught a sea bass, no way, at least a C plus. If I catch another sea bass, I am gonna, hey, look, a red snapper? All is forgiven, Animal Crossing. By early 2021, fervor for Animal Crossing had largely died down among casual fans. Oh wait, they, they got Sanrio and Mario DLC? Let me boot this up real quick. These floating blocks are cool as hell. Not sure I love walking in the shoes of a middle-aged Italian man. I bet he plays a lot of chess. And now we're back here, March 2021, staring down the barrel of a second bunny day. No! But there's a light at the end of the Groundhog Day tunnel that we can all go buy our own counterfeit art. You think that's a real Obey poster? Who cares? I grabbed a bite at Wingstop on the way and it was glorious. But where does that leave Animal Crossing? Animal Crossing will always have a special place in our hearts. When the world was on fire and time meant nothing, Animal Crossing was there for us with a turkey making Thanksgiving dinner for some reason. Hardcore fans will continue to customize their islands to death. What? No way. Is that a whole ass Harry Potter village? How? Meanwhile, the rest of us will put down our consoles and move on. Was this game good? Or is it like falling in love on The Bachelor? You're picking out names for your kids and introducing them to your family until you're crying in the back of an SUV saying, oh my God, why did I do this? I really got my heart broken on a reality TV show. 
We'll look back at our time on the island with fondness, but also with this deep, depressing knowledge that we are all so broken as a society that our idea of escapism is to do chores and pay way too much money for a single room with no amenities. I'm getting those warp pipes though. You can literally teleport between the two of them. How can you not? Uh, whatever happened to Sessler? Did that work out? Hey everyone, well, uh, turns out can't talk for long, but it looks like that the island I was on, it might have been a cult. You know, I wasn't so sure until Tom Nook asked if he could put his initials TK on my butt with the Sharpie, and then it kind of all clicked. But anyway, I'm back here. On the other side, all is copacetic, but you know, I think in looking back, Animal Crossing, at least Animal Crossing New Horizons will always be inextricably linked to the COVID experience. That there's, uh, I, I played so much of that game and it's hard for me to acknowledge otherwise that it was because of the fact that the world had gotten very, very, very strange. Locked in a home, I can't go anywhere, I can't go see my friends. Suddenly I was playing a game that, which is a fine game, but I was playing it with a level of enthusiasm and focus that I don't think I would have given it under any other circumstances. Now what is interesting is that I eventually drifted away from it, as I think many, many other people did. Would I actually say, hey, you know, it almost made COVID worthwhile. No, I think I think taking the big L for society still doesn't merit us having an Animal Crossing game. But if there was to be a second plague, you better believe I'm still ready to go after anyone that tries to short the turnip market. Animal Crossing, we love you. We can't stand you. We hope this is it. But we'll see you in the next pandemic. Hey everyone, just your friendly neighborhood island landlord here. Let's be honest, you had a great time living together on this island. I mean, your living expenses were taken care of, you got to hang out with all these cool buddies, and you learned some new skills. So really, let's just forget about that whole living in debt thing, all right? Hey, where are you going? No, don't go. Don't forget that I still own you!